but please let's join uh, one last time here at the plenary and um, it will be a moment of participation that's a promise okay I step up here um, how can I encourage people who are out there at the staircase to join us here in the plenary tell me the recipe If everybody applauds, Woo! <laughs> wow, that's quite efficient. Who is he? Ah, here. I need you not to sit in the first row. Sorry. I need you to have four neighbors. Yeah, I mean, there will also be a first row. Ha! Funny. <laughs> okay, sorry. I put it that way. I need you not to sit in the first row. Uh, I need you to have four neighbors, however you organize. You can, for instance, you can form a group of four. No, four neighbors, not a group of four. Four neighbors. You organize, however. <laughs> okay, I mean, I studied languages, okay? I'm quite pretty good in languages. Don't blame me for my... Uh, okay, so just... Basically, I want you to join. That's the most general concept of it. And I need you to come in and sit down. Is there a last gong for our participants? I still have one mic to... to Oh, wonderful. Just silence. And you'll help us, Samantha Slate from Montreal, to keep focused, to start focusing on the next hour of working together. Thank you. Um, our self-organized session we did this morning was for a group uh, that started called The Art of Hosting the Commons. And uh, what I would like to propose for you now is a gift from our group to you all. And um, so it's our way of reporting back in action rather than in thinking and uh, uh, linking back to the talk that happened uh, that we had earlier on enlivenment. And so, very simple, all uh, we'd like to offer for you will take 30 seconds only. And the invitation is simply that each of you in the room turn to somebody to make yourselves uh, be in pairs. So make sure you all find somebody who you were with, in a pair with. And I'm going to ask you to do something for 30 seconds. So if you can just all check you've got your pair... It's important to be, I'll be with you, Nancy. I'll be with you, so that way you are in pairs. Has <laughs> everybody got a, their pair? Okay, so once we're in a pair together, and for the late arriver, <laughs> Abdu, make sure you have a pair. You're going to be with somebody. <laughs> there we go, we're set. So 
The invitation is very simple. It's an invitation to be in silence for 30 seconds while you look into the eyes in full presence with the person you are with. And, and, as a second part to this, at the end of the 30 seconds, the bell will ring. And we would like you to say the one word to each other that comes to mind once the bell rings. 30 seconds of silence, and then you share the one word that comes to mind to each other. Simple enough? Um, it would be good to let's have this. So if we're, re- if we're ready when the bell rings, it's silence. Thank you, everybody. I think for some it's a secret. <laughs> this was just actually our team. We had a team session last night, and we tried to figure out. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I thought that, that that this start would keep you in silence, mm-hmm. and it's the other way around. Uh, we had a team session last night to prepare this last session, and so we tried to figure out with. We tried to figure out with 25 people what would be the best methodology to do this and to make you all really being an active part of it. And and then we felt so inspired by Jim Bendel, as we said, that's a pretty nice idea, to talk to your neighbour. Uh, but not only one time, but three times. And then the other is, afterwards, remember what you've told to your neighbor. This is very important. At the, f- at the last moment of this activity, I will explain you why. So, yeah, hope it works. You turn to your neighbor, to, wa- to one neighbor, to the right. What, and you have... And you have four minutes, three, four minutes, we'll ring the bell, to tell, to answer to your neighbor mutually that question. What was your aha moment at ICC? Is the question clear? What was the most important insight? The most important kind of aha moment? Oh, I got it thing. Tell it to your neighbor. Mutually, and we will ring the bell and then share it the same way we did it yesterday in plenary. Here we go. Only one neighbor. It's important only to share it with one person.
Silke, fünf Sekunden. Wir haben das gegenseitig Okay, thank you. So, those who heard something really interesting, some, some interesting inside aha moment from his neighbor, from his partner, please share it with the whole plenary, same way we did it yesterday. Hands up. Yes, an impression that uh, for many people there was a need to, to enact or to do something for the commons to exist, uh, whereas uh, it wasn't actually uh, a need, it was reconnected to our own uh, nature and that uh, a, a divide and a fracture that has been caused by forms of violence, but it's something that we have in us and uh, that we need to reconnect to. Yeah, I learned from my partner that uh, he learned from a workshop that uh, I believe it was either during the Spanish Revolution or prior to it that there was a decision among the uh, one of the communist organizations that no one could could pay wages to anyone else to do anything. So essentially, in that that was a way, I guess, to abolish wage labor. People had to work together and get paid together, but one person couldn't pay another. I'm not sure how well that would work, <laughs> but it, it seemed like an interesting way to sort of abolish the wage system and therefore create an entirely different form of work. Okay. Please stand up while you speak. Yes, hello. Hey, my... Uh Okay. My neighbor has discovered that the work that she's been doing for many, 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 many years uh, apparently is very relevant even today as not many people realize that all the things we're struggling with are so deeply influenced by money systems. So it was a big relief to her to discover that she's, you know, her lonely struggle can now be shared by many people because you all understand the role of money. So my pair, you hear me? No? Yes? Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Okay. So my, my pair told me that um, design principles of group processes are very important to make people have a collective um, conference, but also a movement. And my pair pointed out that, you know, that... The Becoming only the commons could be as oppressive as too much state, too much market, or too much commons. Equally, any one of them could ca cause problems, and we need checks and balances between the three. Anyone else want to share insights from his neighbor, his pair? Mike says that it was a revelation for him to realize that uh, caring and working were also commons. Okay. Uh, what my neighbor said was that um, he felt um, that what was shared in the uh, group could actually be taken forward in terms of how we act and what we do beyond the conference. And uh, there were particular discussions that allowed him to get that kind of insight. Okay, anybody else who wanna share an aha moment of the conference? Sometimes aha moments arrive pretty late. Sometimes, yeah, that, well, that, that, and at least in my case, might be you are quicker. Uh, or your brain works quicker than mine. Um, okay, so um, we switch to the next question. Was it okay the three minutes you talked to each other? Would you like to have a little more? Was okay? Okay, so we, we, we stick to the same methodology. 
I move to a second question. There is many challenges in moving the commons from seed form to core paradigm. Which one do you consider important? Which turn to another neighbor, please. Turn to another neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, here are six mics in the room. Please hands up and the mic next to you will find you. Stand up. Voila. Hello. Yeah, my neighbor said um, he thought uh, an important challenge is that the commons is still in some ways a very, under, uh, very broad, a bit underspecified concept and so he said we should think about more how a commons-based society can really work and in that 
context. Uh, he came back to the question of the starting session, um, where I said there are the ghosts in the room is communism, and he said, yeah, we shouldn't be afraid of thinking about communism, what a modern form of communism or communism can, can mean in these days where there are, yeah, an emancipatory form of, uh, feminist form of communism based on commons. My neighbor almost uh, said a similar thing. She said the greatest challenge she feels is what is the role of women in the commons debate, which caused me to think of the role of men. And she said, yeah, it's important. Uh, and she said, in a way, I hope I put it correctly, it's not a matter of the power itself, it's a matter of who controls the power. And, well, this gives something to think. Um, so my, my pair um, felt that something that wasn't maybe sufficiently thought about was uh, how the commons can create a new life where you can have a very wealthy life and at the same time uh, a, a, a much lighter uh, material footprint on the world. Jay Walspier uh, is the editor of the review on the commons. So he said that um, maybe that's not the most important issues, but it's related to his work. It's about spreading the word. Because he said he had a flash when he, for the first time, heard about the commons. And he said that it's very important to share this information to people so that they can appreciate it and then become commoners in a way. Um, my pair was actually quite indignant at this this uh, way of formulating and framing the debate uh, because of the, the assumptions implicit in this way of expressing it as a sort of new idea when there's two billion people in the world already living this way as everyday life and it's not a, 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 a new idea and the way of phrasing it as a paradigm has the danger or the implicitness in it that the, we're kind of playing this wonderful leadership role when we're actually really simply rediscovering, which is um, almost as old as, as humanity itself. And um, it's, it's, it's something which is, an, as I said, an everyday life for um, uh, perhaps a quarter of the Earth's population. My parents said the seed needs water. And uh, this water being uh, being capable to attract in our daily lives uh, what we need to make those uh, those common grow uh, with the actual parameters also and working towards the transformation. Well, Jan talked about um, making sure that people continue talking with each other, and con um, and uh, this was essentially the same thing that I wanted to say. So it was really wonderful that we had the same thought in our minds. So my, my housemate, George, also my neighbor here, um, uh, said we, uh, that the challenge is to raise the visibility of the, of the commons. And, and for those who may not have that word to label um, uh, that what they practice as commoners, to, that they have that and, and raise the visibility visibility of it. Um, for, uh, for my partner Elizabeth, it was uh, really acknowledging that there are struggles and innovators that have been around for a very long time and all around the world. So we need to have the humility to acknowledge their work and not put ourselves in a bubble and say we're, we're special but actually to reflect our, our, our vision in the work of people around the world everywhere that are part of this, um, this, uh, this process. Uh, my partner, Prabir, um, is always very profound. And he, he said that it's, the real challenge is how do we begin to understand and speak a common language of the commons when we all come from such diverse locations and context. So commoning the language of the common itself is a challenge. 
My um, my housemate is uh, a lady of concrete action, and she says that we've talked about this topic for many years now, and um, we would need a, a concrete plan of uh, how to bring this out to the public over the next few years through open and public conferences, etc. And my partner, Pat, said that um, we're kind of like woodchucks under the ground, and we need to poke our heads up so that everyone can see us. My, my partner said that... Um, speak up, speak up. Speak in, in addition to not only communicating the comments to the outside world, we also need insight to develop a common language. Uh, it's still not done without... Uh, we still uh, face frictions, uh, and we all notice that in different streams that we use different words, which is completely fine, but we have to acknowledge that and to develop a common language to really also, in the inside, um, understand what we're actually talking about. That's We still have a way to go, but we are on a good way. Um, my partner um, pointed out the the challenge of... Uh, having the deep internal shift inside oneself from the I to the we, and that's all. I think that says it. Okay, here we are. Ready for the third question? The last one, by the way. Okay. After leaving ECC, I mean, talking about action, right? Making. Exactly. We all agree to after leaving ECC, I will do the following. My first proposal actually was I will commit to, and then I said, oh, no, that's not really switching um, to a more commonized language. So we rephrase it. We rephrase it like this. I will do the following to move the comments forward. Or I will do the following for the comments movement. Or I will do the following for my or in my community. Uh, you 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 name it. Just I will make what? Three minutes with another partner, please.
Aber Silke muss jetzt irgendwem Hallo sagen. Die hat das, glaube ich, gerade ein bisschen vergessen. Silke! Ja, nee, die müssen jetzt erstmal. So, here we go. And um, you should be aware of the very fact that we have note-takers. Our support team is note-taking of your um, next steps uh, of action for the commons. Um, so, hands up, please. What did your neighbor, what will your neighbor do? And stand up, please, yeah. Well, uh, my neighbor, um, uh, she said that uh, she's uh, going to teach, to do something which I think it's important to highlight, no? have this role teaching some other people, in this case about uh, copyright and, and copyleft and, and, and very uh, well, knowledge-oriented th things to the commons, but I, I just retain the verb of teaching as, a, as an important thing. Someone will be learning at the other side. My partner said that he wants to organize a commons festival. And I like this idea very much because uh, being involved in the globalization movement, I'm, I more and more important became there that the, act, the most important experience for the activists often has been how the resistance, cam the resistance camps have been organized with common space and commons producing economy, we could say, and to have these experiences. And he also added that he want to talk about this tomorrow in the abundance economics workshop tomorrow and meet too I'd love to see as many people of you as can imagine uh, as yeah as many people of you coming there to really think further about stuff like this so um, my, my neighbor Stefano has committed or not committed I guess that's the <laughs> oops <laughs> <laughs> He will, he will, uh, he teaches architects and he will teach and build into his course uh, training architects on how to uh, rethink the built environment, the urban environment, so that it reflects the commons, that it's inviting for all, all, the, all the people, the variety of people that, are, that live in cities, uh, which the city does not always reflect. And, and he did point to my cane uh, here as an example of uh, making sure that uh, we reflect that. So I think this is very important. Plus double the amount of women toilets in buildings, because there's always long queues. <laughs> Uh, my neighbor, uh, Rosa, is involved in a peer-to-peer -peer, um, organ uh, promoting organization and will try and situate her activity in relation to the commons and will bring back the message, uh, knowledge from the commons principles into her activity. My neighbor, uh, um, Michelle, said that inspired by the extraordinary work that I'm going to tear up <laughs> that Nancy Roof has done over the years on Cosmos Journal that um, he is going to create a sister journal on the commons with a more scientific pardon a journal of commons economics um, uh, in the future it's a good Uh, 
Uh, my partner wants to uh, publish about this conference and especially about uh, the uh, keynote speaker and Andreas Weber's um, input in the Cosmos Journal and um, also communicate what was happening here uh, to a partner in, in Africa where she's in contact with and in, I think in, in other media you also want to, um, to, to, to share what she, what she learned here. My neighbor is um, going to be working on the Rajasthan uh, common land policy. And I kind of hope that we're all going to be working on our Rajasthan common land policies, uh, wherever our Rajasthan happens to be. Kai is going to go back to Russia and find out how they're going to fight the oppression of the World Trade Organization there. Um, my partner, Susan, uh, is promises to organize a uh, common sharing festival in the U.S. Uh, before 2014 in cooperation with a number of organizations like Cosmos Magazine on the Commons and uh, a few others that I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Um, my partner thinks we need to be cooler and clearer. Uh, and more desirable in our communications, and so proposes a symbol, a symbol which would convey our commons ethos, the commons uh, ethos of any project or organization uh, that we're working within. So uh, uh, Georges uh, is here somewhere. He's gone. Georges, right. there you are. Okay. So graphic designers, get in touch with Georges. Yeah, my partner Daniel suggested uh, reaching out to green groups in Germany about the Commons ideas, thinking that they're already close and might pick this up quickly. There are the mics. This was supposed my, my to be part? without running around. Since she's giving the mic, I just think we should applaud Silke because every moment she is organizing us and orchestrating us and cheering us on. So <laughs> thank you. I just had to say that. I just had to say that. A bit later. I know. I couldn't resist you like, running across the room. Like, um, My partner uh, was very moved by the presentation earlier this afternoon about the um, sort of meaning and life of the commons, the enlivenment in the commons. And so she committed to fostering the human commons by staying in touch with the people that have really touched her today and writing about her work so that it's bigger than one island and that all of our work is bigger than one island where we are, that, it's, that this is woven together in a human commons. Well, my partner <coughs> was very strict about developing currency. Currency and currency and one more currency. Um, well, my partner, when she returns to Bolivia, will continue her work with domestic workers, but bring to it a greater sense of how this work and how people's lives fit in with the commons and, uh, and spread the word. My, I'll jump in. Uh, my partner, Josh, is uh, he's editing a special issue of the Journal of Ecological Economics. Proposal, okay, so... Okay, so uh, so an, an issue on ecolo in e ecological economics that incorporates commons principles. So the ecological economists in the room, you know who to talk to. My partner will what? be will be working to bring together diverse commons movements and struggles in different countries and from different cultures so that they can learn from each other in a way that respects their diversity. So I'm, I'm really keen to hear what Wolfgang will share with us right now because his partner in this conversation was the president of the Heinrich Böll Foundation, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was talking, yes, I was talking with Barbara Unmüßig and um, in the Heinrich Böll Stiftung, they want to continue their work, uh, which is ongoing, 
uh, about fighting various enclosures and about seeds uh, and uh, about uh, ecosystem services, as they're called, uh, which uh, often serve as enclosures and privatizations of of uh, ecological resources. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. And as I said, you please, please remember what you have shared with your neighbor. And uh, even before leaving home, you can just enter our uh, communication platform and you will see here tools for action. We already set up a tool for action, which came out of uh, the money markets and value stream. Because Gwendolyn made that wonderful proposal to say, the first thing to start a currency, or however you name it, is just to list what we need and then to list what we have. So we opened a tool here a tool for action so that you can list there what you need from a broader commons movement and what you have to offer to this broader commons movement. And also you'll find these three questions we just talked about in plenary. And please send us, because we could not hear of all of you and of all your ideas for doing commons for commoning. So we would like to like you to just fill in those three, um, answer those the three questions again on our communication platform, so, they, so that we get inspiration to move forward for action. And I guess you, as I do, are keen to hear from our stream leaders um, how they would answer to the very same questions, and that will be the last part of our country, almost last part. And I. Ask the audience, Saki Bailey, to come. Oh, yeah, you can speak from Bailey, yeah, if you wish. Okay. Um, and Ludwig Schuster's over there, show up. Ludwig, money and value stream, Saki, nature stream, Heike, care and labor, um, Mike. Where's Mike? Ah, yeah, he's not that small, I thought. Yeah, and uh, Miguel, here in front of me. So, first question to you. I need to refresh. Ah, what was your aha moment? And it might be even an aha moment okay. during the intense, really intense conference preparation we had <laughs> because we did this all together, interconnected, um, uh, well, doing it at long distance, uh, Skype calls, um, who had to bridge a 12-hour, um, how's it called? So, time zone... Yeah, um, so it, this was really, really, really amazing. We, we can do amazing things together, just communicating with each other. That's what we did to prepare this conference. And now I would love to know what is your, has been your aha moment until now. Okay, actually my aha moment took place in the afternoon session, or in the morning session this morning for my stream. Um, just to say, my stream has been incredible. I have learned so much from all of you, and I've had the most amazing people participating in my stream. I have to just mention Brian Davy, Joshua, Soma, um, Anil, uh, many of you. The contributions you made were just precious. And actually, one of the, um, the so my aha moment took place in the morning stream. I was working with the water group. We split into three groups, water, air, and land for the natural resource commons. And during the water session this morning, I just, it was not so much an aha moment in terms of a, con a conceptually, but it was an experience of having everybody there listening to one another, respecting one another, a true exchange of ideas. And I felt I had this, my aha moment was, this is commoning. This is, this is commoning to participate in this engaged way where you're not just waiting to speak, but you're really listening to what the other has to say. And the sense of togetherness and the sense of the, the, um, the commonality within our struggles and our experiences this was a beautiful aha moment for me. Um, well, I already uh, had my aha moment shared by my partner, which was that uh, 
that uh, labor and care would be something that we could think of as comments. But I'll say I'll say a, another one, which is in developing uh, or giving uh, Carolina Vertero feedback on her keynote. It uh, looking for examples. One of uh, I've been saying for a while that all you know all commons involve knowledge, but the thing that really evoked that or made that concrete for me was the idea that uh, when something, when another commons is enclosed, for example, infrastructure, we actually forget how to how to manage it as a commons. And that I think in, an, in a negative example, but nonetheless a very evocative example shows how shared knowledge is extremely important to all, all of our commoning. Well, my aha moment, my aha moment was when someone approached me and told me there was something in your presentation which was very enlightening and very useful for me. And there were a couple of seconds when I thought, oh, maybe this or that. And then he said it, and it was something that I totally wouldn't have anticipated. So I felt like dialogue, uh, surprising dialogue is, is important. It's important to always have surprise and unexpectedness in, in, this, in communication. Yeah, well, my I had two aha moments. I, the second one is very small, so don't worry. Um, one aha moment was just uh, over lunchtime when I came back from my uh, roundtable interview, um, which was delayed. And when I got back to, to my own breakout session, everybody had already organized themselves. And they were working in a manner as, as if they did nothing else all the day long. So I was really impressed by that uh, mode of self-organization, which is so, um, yeah, which is key and core to everybody uh, who is here. And I'm really impressed by that. Uh, the other aha moment was very, uh, was sort of a spotlight in Silke's presentation. And I only want to highlight that word again because I think it needs to be highlighted. It was integrity. That's it. I guess my aha moment is that when Silke said in the first evening how far we have come in only five or three years, depending on from, from where you start to look at, uh, how far we have come in building a commons movement, that it's not just a claim, it's a reality. And that was really something we could feel here. The whole mood, the sizzling, the creativity, this energy, um, that has occupied the Bell House for the last two and a half days. That's really great. It's a reality. It's not a claim. Thank you all for that. Okay, second question. There are many challenges in the comments. What do you think is a very important one for you? Richard? Yeah. Uh, I think actually it came up during Heike's talk and, you know, I thought it was so powerful the use of these um, animations and the narratives that went with them because I think the biggest challenge is the issue of getting com people who are actually commoners to realize that they're commoners, that the activities that they do, they're doing are commoning. I think this is one of the difficult challenges of the shift to the paradigm. So I think it actually would be very useful. I, we talked about it a bit in, in our uh, water group that, you know, to create narratives about different types of water struggles, people who are struggling to protect the Great Lakes, for example, as Al Ale um, Alexa is doing, and, you know, to have also struggles, uh, an image of people struggling for water remunicipalization against privatization, different kinds of narratives about water struggles, because I think it's very much this process of identification through storytelling, which I think is the, the important point in the challenge. Well, the challenge and opportunity is to actually move more production and maintenance into the commons, actually have the commons out-compete other modes. I think a real challenge is, and it has to do a bit with what uh, Saki said, how to manage the crossovers, the convergences. We have organized a conference in five streams, but how do we actually align these narratives? Um, how, we, how do we 
make the connect, for example, between labor and money, which I think is really like one of the key, key, key issues that we have to get our head around. So in terms of conceptualizing follow-ons, I think we, we really have to have these kind of transdisciplinary groups, if you want to uh, quote unquote uh, say it, which means we have to mix the colors. We cannot have them like this. We, have, we need another logo. They have to sort of merge with each other. Will become gray. I, I know that from a children's from a children's book. <laughs> so, um, what I think we need to challenge um, in moving the commons from seed form to core paradigm is not to forget to take a rest once in a while and to breathe and uh, to to look around you and see if everybody else is still there, and uh, yeah, well, care for the others which are around you. Well, my, my, the challenge I, I, I find, I think it's a bit of a common place, but I, I also think it relates very specifically to, to commons. I won't go over it, but it's how to bridge uh, local and global. I think uh, not going from one extreme or the other, but how to deal with those two major layers. And what will you make next for the comments? I give it back to you. You start this time. I had another idea after talking to my partner about this. I submitted uh, a paper not, not long ago when I talk quite a bit about comments and, and commodification as well. And I got one reviewer saying, oh, you know, you're, you're kind of suggesting socialist solutions. And I think he meant it in a, in a very bad sense. I'm not sure if I take it that way as bad, but one of the things I'll do is ignore it and stand and man maintain a commons defense in my in my paper. Okay, so I mean, related to this conference, I'm for sure going to put up the presentation of our session in the water group so that we can use this in our different conversations with each other. I think it could be really useful for the participants and also so that we can stay in contact with each other so that we can build on this experience that we had together. And then personally, I think the, the next thing that I'm going to move for the Commons is to really push in the uh, situation of the Naples municipality to um, uh, provide policy advice, which is to include a representative of the commoners of the, not just to have a monitoring body for the water system, but to actually have a representative from that monitoring system, which represents the users and workers and environmentalists directly within the, the board, as opposed to having those two uh, d decision making bodies uh, or rather to have this decision making body separate from the monitoring body let me see if I can uh, use commoning as a paradigm to help uh, knowledge commoners in particular I mean people whether they identify themselves as commoners or not see the the political potency of of again moving uh, moving provision into the commons. Okay, after after leaving this conference, there's a few things I need to do very instantly, which is uh, care for documentation. And we have had so many uh, maps and uh, single items in maps which need to be reviewed and. Sort of, uh, I, I need to rethink how to bring this to uh, you as a as a complete audience and all the others who are not here. Uh, this is quite a task um, I will be involved with for the next few days, I think. And uh, after that, I'll take a rest. <laughs> Lucky man. Yeah, I'm. It's pretty much related. Uh, pitching in with really keeping keeping the richness of what has been discussed here and that has to be put somehow onto paper, uh, I mean, or digitalized. And uh, you remember after the ECC, the ICC, um, we have also uh, discussed how we can make this diversity of thoughts available to a larger community out there 
not even being aligned with the commons movement or thinking of it. Um, and that's the book, the anthology that has been uh, grown out of ICC over one and a half, almost two years. And yeah, we can potentially think of continuing similar publishing work that grows out of the documentation of ECC. A big applause for our stream leaders, please. Woo. It is really so, so difficult to de hierarchize our language. I meant, of course, a big applause for our stream coordinators. Thank you.